Hey everyone, thank you so much for being here today. My name is Denise, I'm also known as Hey Wig Sister on Instagram and Facebook. Today I'm here to bring you a video talking about hot airbrushes and using them on wigs. I get asked every single week, what hot airbrush is my favorite? And I can't really answer that question because I own three and I use them for different purposes. And I wanna share with you today my experience with hot airbrushes when I think they can be a good tool on wigs and which one I like to use for which purpose. So if you're curious about this topic, then stick around so that we can talk about it and I can share with you my experience. If you have watched any of my previous videos, you have probably started to pick up on the fact that I am a huge fan of empowering you to work with your wigs. I think feeling confident in making wigs your own is 90% of the battle with wig wearing because it can be really challenging and not every wig comes to us looking exactly perfect for us. So instead of returning 95% of the wigs that you purchase or being paralyzed and afraid to even purchase a wig because you're not sure if, you're, if it will work for you, I would prefer to show you how to work with them so that you have confidence every time you purchase a wig that you'll be able to either figure out how to make it work or you'll know when a wig just isn't right for you and you can return it with confidence. So in this video, we're gonna talk about three different hot airbrushes, and I definitely think that if you are a long-term wig wearer, if you're going to be wearing wigs for a long time, and you like to wear lots of different styles, I do think you're probably going to want to own more than one hot airbrush. Now, you don't have to buy them all at once, but I definitely think there is a place for all three of these types of hair, hot airbrushes in a wig wearer's wardrobe and their arsenal of tools. So let me tell you why. Okay, first of all, we're gonna start with this one and I'm gonna tell you that the wig I have on my head is Raquel Welch Untold Story. This is in the color SS Iced Cafe Latte. I just recently reviewed this wig within the last six weeks or so and I did put a short out, a short video on YouTube and I think I also put it on Instagram showing me putting this particular wig in a low ponytail going to a barbecue. Now, if you go back and watch my review, and I highly recommend you do if you're curious what this wig looked like before I took a hot airbrush to it, you will see this wig was a lot more um, kind of rounded and had a lot more flippies on the end. A lot of like flippy up flippies, flip, I mean just kind of unruly flippies. It was super cute, but that's not my preferred style when it comes to wigs. And so what I did was I took this hot airbrush to it and I basically just round brushed it under all the way through just like this to straighten it out a little bit. It still has some bounce and a little bit of roundness to it, but it doesn't have the extreme flippies that it had originally. So again, go watch that review so that you can see what I'm talking about. But let me just tell you what this is. So this is a Hot Tools. All of them actually are Hot Tools brand uh hot airbrushes. This one says Hot Tools Professional. I will link every one of these to uh, Amazon in my in the description of this video. I purchased them all on Amazon. Nobody sent these to me. I'm not sponsored to do this. It just so happens that these were the ones that I purchased. I think there's a number of them out there like this style though. I think Revlon makes one. I think Milano just came out with one. So you don't have to purchase this brand, but uh, one of the things I really like about this brand of this particular one is it's the size of it is great for, uh, for maybe shoulder length and longer heat friendly pieces. So this is one that you would not use on a regular synthetic, uh, you know, regular synthetic technically you shouldn't be taking heat to regular synthetic because you could melt it. These hot airbrushes, these two hot tools are all plastic and they have very, very low heat. And I will show you that in a few minutes. Whereas this one gets much, much hotter. That's one of the re things I really love about this. Uh, 
heat friendly synthetic the ends can start to get frizzy and clumpy and show wear a lot faster than regular synthetic especially if it's a longer piece and it rubs up on your clothing the way to combat that and to keep a heat friendly piece moving nicely and feeling soft and silky and all of that is to take heat to it periodically. I like to just take a hot airbrush to the ends just like this to all of my heat friendly synthetic wigs periodically to keep them feeling nice. This will alter the curl pattern though. It could just relax a curl pattern or wave or it could completely remove it. So I personally don't like to get heat friendly pieces in a wavy or curly piece. I'm going to be doing a video uh, soon talking about kind of, I love synthetic, I love heat friendly synthetic, and I love human hair. And I'd like to tell you what, what kind of styles I think lend themselves better to each type of hair fiber. I think the straight or just very slightly wavy lend themselves better in heat friendly because taking heat to it will relax that. So let me just turn this on and let me just sort of demonstrate for you what I did to this to take some of that uh, flippy nonsense out. <laughs> so I turned it on to high and I just do this. And I'll run it over the top. This can be really good for flyaways as well. If you have a wig that's got a ton of flyaways, and sometimes these straighter heat friendly pieces can be that way, taking a hot airbrush to the top of it to smooth it out can really significantly help. This is also going to refresh these fibers. I've worn this wig a lot because I just love it. So it's probably time I take a little heat to it anyway. It's going to soften up the fibers. It's going to remove any excess frizzy. It's going to help the piece to be able to see how it's sort of clumping together when I do that. It's going to help it be a little bit less clumpy. This one's already, I only took a couple of brushes through it and it's already moving just a little bit nicer. So that's what I really love about this, this one. You do this. I did this on a mannequin head. It was just easier for me. But you could do this on your own head. But basically, I just spent time going over it like this all throughout and that's what took some of those flippies out and smoothed this out now this one in particular gets really really warm on high and so it's almost too warm for me if i'm really trying to alter a style it's a little bit too warm on my head i just i can feel it and the fibers start to get really warm so that's why i think it might work a little bit better on a mannequin head but this piece is great on heat friendly wigs to really help those ends smooth out. It has a metal barrel and it has two settings, a high, has three settings, cool, low, and high. I like to use the high if I'm really trying to alter the style or help some really unruly ends. You could use the low if it's, if you're just trying to do some basic maintenance on the ends and they're not really feeling frizzy, you just want to take it, or maybe you're just trying to tame some flyways, you could start out with the low and see how that goes. So really, really like this one. You would not ever use this one on a regular synthetic for two reasons. Number one, the metal barrel could get too hot for a regular synthetic and melt it, but this one, the air gets much too hot. So that's when I would move on to one of these. All plastic, they feel cheapy, they really do, but they work really well on regular synthetic. Now, how do you know if a hot airbrush is too hot for a regular synthetic? I use the hand test. So first of all, make sure it's all plastic barrel. But then I use the hand test. You know, I actually didn't plug this one in, so I'm gonna pause you guys and plug this in and then I'll demonstrate for you. So what you do is you, the hand test, to tell if it's a temperature that is safe for regular synthetic. I turn it on to high and then I put my hand over it. You would, I, actually, you don't even have to put uh, on the wig. That probably wouldn't make sense to put it on the wig if you're testing it. You put your hand on it and you hold it. It's on, it's blowing. It's just now starting to get a little bit uncomfortable. But I can still hold it. That is the test, because you're not gonna hold the hot airbrush on the hair fibers even on a heat-friendly synthetic with one of these, you're not gonna hold it on there for 
anywhere near as long as I was just holding it with my hand. That's the test. If you can hold it for some time with it on and it's not burning your hand, then it should be okay for a regular synthetic. I do want to warn you guys though, every time you see a video like this and you get advice from someone, please do your own research, do your own testing. Just because I tell you that it works and it's worked for me, it doesn't mean that you should just jump in with both feet and take that as gospel. I would always test it out on an inconspicuous part of the wig. Maybe take an under piece of the underside and put it on that before you go and start using heat on like the top part where if something were to go wrong, you can't hide it. So please, you know, use this at your own discretion, but I'm not going to tell you guys something that I haven't done a bunch of times because I would sure hate for somebody to ruin their wig, but that's the hand test. Just make sure I couldn't even hold this one for like three seconds on high. It blows really, gets really, really hot. And the fibers, when I was straightening out this piece, the fibers were almost too touch hot for me to touch right away after I took it off. So you definitely want to be cautious. Now I actually have two of these and here's why. Let me do a quick wig change for you guys. I brought a regular synthetic wig that needs, oops, that's not the right one. I left it in the other room. Hold on, you guys. All right, I thought I'd be going back in there to put it on. I think that's why I did that, but I can just put it on in front of you guys. It's no big deal. So this one is a wig that I was practicing on, and so I cut bangs into this one because there was some issue with the front. And so I thought, well, what a perfect opportunity for me to practice and learn how to cut bangs. And so I trimmed some bangs, but you can see they're not laying flat. They're sort of sticking out a little bit. So it's not, didn't go so well. So what I do is I will use a hot airbrush on this. And actually I'm gonna plug this one in now. And this is my demonstration why I have two of these. So this one is the one, I think this is the one inch barrel. It might be the one and a half inch barrel. This one is the smallest one. I think it's like three quarters. I'm going to link these in the description so that you will know exactly um, what I'm using. But this is the smallest one that they sell. And I originally had this one and I used this one on my, on my um, regular synthetic wigs a lot. But when I was messing with this one, I couldn't get, this barrel is just much too big for me to get these bangs to lay down. So that's what this is for. Now, let me grab some water and then I'll show you guys how you would go about using this. So one of the keys to using a hot airbrush with a regular synthetic is to use a little bit of water on it. That's my preference. I think it uh, creates just a little bit of a steam environment. It allows the hot air brush to work a little bit better, especially since we're using pretty low heat. It's going to take probably a little bit more to get it to work on these regular synthetic fibers. That's where a water will come in. Now I do have multiple videos out here showing you guys how I have worked with regular synthetic wigs to get out cold crimping or cold setting out of a wig. I showed you on another one how to tame bangs with a hot airbrush. So this is not a full tutorial on this. I will link those videos in the description. So in the description of this video are going to be a lot of videos that I will link that you can go watch to learn more about all of the stuff I'm talking about today. So just use this as your introduction and then go watch some of those other videos so that you can really enhance your education. But what I do is I just take a little bit of water and I just gently spray. I don't get it soaking wet, just a little bit of water. You don't want to soak it because then it's going to take much too long to dry. Then you take your hot air brush and you start to, however, whatever it is you're trying to do, if you're trying to tame flippies, if you're trying to smooth out some cold crimping, if you're trying to get rid of flyaways, whatever it is you're trying to do, then just do that with your hot airbrush. So it'll depend on your technique. But, and you can see, I'm putting my hand on here. I would not be able to do this with that other one. But my goal is I'm just trying to get these banks to curve under a little bit. 
and lay down some because they were just sort of poking out. Now, once I get this down, I might need to trim these more because they're going to be laying a little bit flatter. But that's essentially what you're doing and why I need to have more than one of these. Now, regular synthetic and heat friendly synthetic, they have to cool before they take on the style. So if I, you're taking a hot airbrush to bangs, you're going to want to make sure you're either kind of holding it down like this with your hand until it cools or if you're wanting to get a little curve under, hold it a little bit just so that once it cools, it will hold the style that you were just trying to achieve. Over here, I probably would want to do this under a little bit just to get a little curve under here. So then I would want to hold that until it cools. The same thing using this on a heat friendly, if you're trying to modify the style, if you're trying to get some curve unders or things like that, get a little bit of body, which you can use a hot airbrush for on a on a heat friendly synthetic is to get more body on the top. You just want to maybe then hold it up that direction until it cools so it will hold the style. But that's all other tutorials, not really for this video, but already, and I hardly did anything, I can already see that the bangs are improving on this. So that's why I say, if you're going to be a full-time wig wearer, I really think you should have it be your goal to own multiple tools for multiple different purposes. Unless you're never ever going to get a heat friendly wig. If you just don't see yourself ever wanting to have a heat friendly wig, then you probably don't ever have to get this. But if you're curious about heat friendly and you think you might want to have a few, this is going to be the hot airbrush or something like it that gets warm enough and holds its heat enough that it will actually impact those fibers. If you're just going to wear regular synthetic, then you might want one or both of these depending. If you're never gonna wear bangs and you're never gonna wear a short piece, you probably don't need one this small. This is probably plenty for you. But if you're like me, sometimes you wear short, sometimes you wear long, I'm starting to get into bangs a little bit, I do have a need for both of these because they serve different purposes. This is just a little bit too small for my longer um, regular synthetics and so this one is perfect. So at the end of the day, when you guys say, which hot airbrush do you recommend? My first question for you is, what are you gonna use it for? What are, you know, what's your goal with it? It's hard to recommend a product unless I know how you plan to use it. So hopefully this helped you guys. I will put links in the description. I do think hot air brushes are an incredibly invaluable tool for a wig wearer. And if you don't own one right now, I would highly recommend thinking about getting one. Now, some people will never play with their wigs. They will never alter their wigs. But I do still think that a hot airbrush has a place. In the description, I'm going to link a video where I show you how to get rid of cold crimping in a wig. Sometimes a wig comes out of the box with um, like odd bumps or crimps or something in the fibers. And it's because the wig depending on how it was packed in the box when it hits multiple temperature extremes which can happen to wigs because they're in transit places so they might be on a hot truck in transit and then they go into a climate cooled warehouse or they might be traveling in the dead of winter go in someplace warm I mean you just never know and so to avoid having to return so many things sometimes a little bit of cold crimping in a bang or on the side is super, super easy to fix. Or sometimes you purchase something on clearance and you can't return it. In those cases, I think you're really gonna wanna have a hot airbrush. So I highly recommend considering getting one. Again, I'll link what I have in the description. There's lots of other types and lots of other brands and so you can certainly do your research. If you know of a tool, a hot airbrush type tool that you love and that you think works great, please share it in the description so that your wig sisters, many of whom read the comments, can go check out what you recommend. And so I can too, because I'm always looking to learn. So please don't hesitate to share. I hope you found this helpful. Please let me know if this was helpful. Please like, give a thumbs up to this video if you found it even marginally helpful because this then helps my channel and helps YouTube to know that I'm putting out valuable content. Also, you can help me a lot by sharing my videos. If you're members of Facebook groups and you're out there in the community of Wig Sisters, 
share some of my helpful videos so that people can find this information. There's just hungry, hungry, hungry women out there wanting to know how to manage this wig journey, how to learn how to work with wigs. So we need to share with them all the resources that we know of so that we can help them. Thanks so much for watching you guys. I appreciate you so much. I'll talk to you soon. Mm -hmm.